your Bible, the iPad, your phone, whatever. Get something in your hand that can get the Word of God to you. If you don't have anything, look up at the screen. I want you to turn over to the book of Genesis. What book did I say? Genesis. What book did I say, everybody? Genesis. Now, if you don't know where Genesis is, please see me at this corner right after service. And I'm going to have prayer for you, okay? <laughs> Genesis, the beginning, that book of beginnings. Genesis chapter number 2. And we're going to read verses 18 and 21 through 25. Genesis chapter 2. I'm reading from the New Living Translation. I want you to follow along with whatever version you have. Here's what the Bible says. Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be alone. I will make a helper who is just right for him. Verse 21. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. While the man slept, the Lord God took one of the man's ribs and closed up the opening. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib and he brought her to the man. At last, the man exclaimed, This one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. This explains why a man leaves, somebody say leaves, his father and mother and is joined, somebody else say joined, joined to his wife and the two are united into one. Now, don't miss verse 25 everybody, the man and his wife were both naked but they felt no shame. This morning as we began our relationship series by the title of RQ, Relationship Quotient, I want to consider as a subject, why did I get married? Okay, I, 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 I know some of y'all, y'all not really feeling me right now, but can I just, I know your spouse said too close for you to say something, but just look at me real quick if you know what I'm talking about. Why did I? Got too many church folk in here trying to be cute. Just, why did I get married? Why? 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 You don't have to say that. Some of y'all scared of y'all's folk right now. Why? Why did I get married? Get married. You may be seated. In the presence of our God. Listen to me, everybody. I need you to look at me. Because I want to begin today by teaching from the theme of relationships. This is going to be part one of our first inaugural sermon series. I'm, I, I have to be honest. I'm more of a series dude than I am a one-hit wonder. So I, I, I've, been, I've been making it the best way that I can up until this point, but I'm more of a planner and a preparer. So what I really like to do is sit down and settle in something for a second so that I can really give you substance as we unpack the Word of God. So here's where I'm going to start today. I just want to pose a very basic question to everybody in here who's over the age of 18. If you're not 18, you're not single, you're a child. Amen. Yeah, you're not. You're not. I'm sorry. You're not, I want y'all to peek from the periphery because I still believe these principles will bless you. But but you're not single at 16. Amen. I, I wish I had an adult, somebody grown, who know what I'm talking about. Yeah, that's what y'all thinking is love. You don't have no idea what love really is yet. You're not even developed. Don't even know how to love yourself or who you are. But I want you to understand where we are going so that you can still grasp these principles. Why get married? Look at me, everybody. Married people. Don't y'all follow me right now. I need y'all to look directly at me. Why get married? If you had to answer that question, what would you say? Now, I don't know about you married people, but sometimes when I'm in one of those seasons, I want y'all act like y'all don't know what them seasons are like. Yeah. When 
man, I'm in one of those seasons where me and my wife are going through. I, I know I've asked that question of myself a time or two. I, I'll be honest, if none of y'all can. Okay, 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 okay. Y'all know the seasons, right? Where it seems like you argue over F everything and the slightest thing will set off the next fight. Who know about, no, no, y'all can't. Okay, at least one person. Okay, just your life ain't here. So, of course, you were way better, brother. Okay, 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 okay. All right. So, so y'all know, y'all gonna follow me. They say it just me. That's all right. That's all right. I need prayer. I'm the pastor. But I need prayer too. Amen. Okay, okay. Now, 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 seriously, though, listen to me. Everybody, have you ever been through one of those times or one of those seasons where you be arguing about stuff and in the middle of the argument, you forgot what the argument was about? And you be like, no, she is not, or no, he is not going to get the best of me. So I'm going to win this argument no matter what it takes. Who, who, whoever, just, yeah, I know, this ain't going to be the help thing. Just wink at her, brother, I know. Okay, 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 I'm going to have to drive down somebody's street real quick. Okay, who's ever been here before? When you you going through something, and there's all of a sudden a, a side argument with your mom. Now, when are you going to start putting the tube in the toothpaste in? Now, I start doing it as soon as you learn how to squeeze it from the bottom. Squeeze it from the bottom. Why don't you learn how to wash out the dishes in the sink so I keep this house clean? Keep this house clean. I just be glad you cook me some. Cook me some. Uh, you should be cooking me some. I want just like you. Okay, baby. Tell the truth. Okay, okay. I'm sorry. I had it. Oh, oh, I am in church. My bad. Okay. <laughs> Y'all pray for me. Okay, okay. Now, that, that, that single people laugh. Don't, don't laugh at me because I'm about to get to y'all right now. Because I, I want to ask every single person in here this question right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do you want to get married one day? Yes! Yes, I do. I'm going to back back there. They'll actually help you preach. Okay, somebody said yes, somebody said no. Anybody with a maybe? Maybe, maybe, no, maybe. No, not really. Is he the yes or no? Okay. Yes. Okay. Hallelujah. Somebody said no. Okay, okay. Now, now, now listen to me, all you knows. Listen to me that this is about to get rough right up and through here. To all of you who said no, Pastor, I'm not down with no marriage. I'm good right where I'm at. I've been through too much relationship drama, and I've seen too many other people who are married and miserable. Nah, Pastor, I do not want to get married. For all of you who said you don't want to get married, listen to this because this is going, this is going, this is going to help you right here because you do know in order to operate and live God's way and have his will done in your life. You do know it's always good to operate in the will of God, right? Who who ain't know yeah, it's always best to choose what God wants for you yes, rather than choose what anybody else wants for you. Because when God when you choose what God wants for you, he can always keep his hand on you. But when you go outside of what God wants for you, sometimes God does it. Now I gotta let you learn this thing so that you can understand my ways are not your ways, nor your ways my ways, but my ways are always right for you. Listen to me all you knows, you do know that God's way is no way, no way. Uh, right. they, they, they won't try to help me with that. Right? Uh, it's, it, 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 it. Just lean on your name and say, it's rough, but it's right. Yeah, it's, it's I, rough, I, but it's right. It, it, it's tight, but it's right. I, I, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God, God's way, you do know. Now, 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 listen to me, everybody. That's not antiquated. That's not archaic. That's not for grandma and them's generation. No, that is the word of God. And that is what God says he still wants for his people. And to all of you saying that's unrealistic, nobody's doing that no more. I got to expose a quick lie from the devil to you. That is not true. There are still a few of us. Oh, God, help me in here. That God's that are still willing, no matter what my flesh wants, I make my flesh submit to what God wants. Yeah. Mm, it, 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 no bed, no bed singles. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Well, we all lost, bro. We gonna be married one day, or until you stand. At, at, at this arch, or, or I don't know, some of y'all didn't do an arch, you did your backyard, the courtroom, or however you did it, don't worry really about it, but until you take vows and make a covenant before God, it don't count. Yeah, not your fiance, not your child's father, not not your, your, your baby mama, no, 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 God says, no way, no way, everybody. And all you married people gave me help. That's all right. I'm gonna keep going anyway. Okay. Now, now before listen, listen, listen. This is this is good. You can't miss this part, right? Because before I lay the groundwork for marriage, 
Before I talk about why Mary, first thing I got to do is unpack this. I want to tell you why you should not get married. It is about to bless some single person up in here. Now, married people, let me, let me cross you right here. It's too late for you. Yeah, don't, don't be seeing one of your, your things up on the screen yet yeah, and then be talking about, hey, I, I, I got it now. God, thank you. I got mean, it. No, no. God said it's too late. What you said I do before, whatever you said I do for it and help, God said, no, that settles it for me. That's what it is. And even if you decide it wrong, God says it is what it is, and I'm committed to keeping this covenant together. Only, only three of y'all have to be right. Okay, ten reasons not to get married. Oh, this going to bless somebody in marriage. Please, look at me, look at me, look at me, look at me. As well, look, look at this. Ten reasons not to get married. Here's number one. This about to mess up sister sitting near you up right here. Number one, because I want to have my big day. Ooh, just, just look at somebody and say, if you can't say amen, just say ouch. Yeah, yeah. Ouch. yeah, yeah. You, you'd be surprised at how many people are spending more energy on the day than they spend on the rest of the days that will follow the big day. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But because I need to have my day where I'm a king, I'm a princess, I'm a queen, and I'm, everything will be about me. That's, that's why we got so many bridezillas running around up here, because I got to have my day. I've waited so long for this. I'm going to have me a day. The only problem with that is there's so many more days that's going to follow this day. Right. And if all you did was spend your energy investing to getting to this day, what do you want to do? Okay, okay, here's somebody right here. Because I want somebody to take care of me. By the way, y'all, if you don't have your notes out, we, we try to email them out to you. They'll be on the website by tomorrow, so don't trip. But you need to start writing again because I'm not preaching today, I'm teaching. But 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 look, look at number two, because I want somebody to take care of me. I was I don't even remember who it was, but I was interacting with somebody on social media this week. We were talking about that whole Y'all know, come on, we in Baltimore now. Y'all know the whole drama and the whole mess we've been going through. As a city, see like every way you turn, that's all they're talking about. Ray Rice, the Ravens, the NFL, and all this kind of nonsense. And I was having a, a discussion with somebody on social media, and, and somebody said, well, because I'm like, man, why in the world will somebody marry somebody who did that to them? Tell the truth. Yeah, can I just stay right here for a second and speak to all of you who have been the victim of uh, 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 abuse or, 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 or verbal or mental or physical or whatever, if, 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 if that person does it to you before you get here, what do you think will happen after they got you? Because for all you single people, and y'all better give me an offer after this over, because I'm about to save some of y'all right here. For all you single people right here, you do know, I don't care what they look like before they get here. Yes. Once they get up and through here, the real them will come out. Yeah, I, I, we have been together 10 years, the, the real them will come out here. Yeah. The, the, the real them, yeah, not, not, not the one they wanted you to see that was trying to get you and impress you, but the real them, the one who don't bring flowers at the uh -huh. Valentine's Day, the one that always don't text every morning, good morning, how are, they're not real them. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I wish a married person would wave at me right now and say, Pastor, keep teaching this thing. <laughs> okay, I'm glad. I'm, all right, okay, okay, here's number three. Who this, oh, this. This is for y'all youngins especially. Yeah, you need to y'all need to peek in right here. Because my family and friends told me we should. Uh -huh. Any, anybody ever heard some stuff like y'all make a cute uh -huh. couple yeah. together? Y'all yeah. yeah. look so good. Y'all yeah. y'all y'all look so yeah yeah y'all 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 should just go ahead. Yeah. Okay, let me help somebody here because. See, and I don't want to rush past this and minimize this because I don't want to tell you that you shouldn't listen to godly counsel. I, I don't I want to say that nobody has nothing good to say. But how many of you know most of the people in your life just talking without talking to God? Mm -hmm. 
So all they're doing is using their senses, all they're doing is going off the flesh, all they're doing is going off of what it looks like. But see, people who talk to God are able to see behind the mask. They're able to see behind people's work. No, anybody here ever been with somebody before and then you had that one friend like, nah, girl, I don't think y'all should be together. No, I don't think you want. And you thought at the time that she just hating on me because she ain't got no man and her man don't treat her right. But at the end, what she was not telling you was a lie, but she was actually telling the truth. Okay, only two of y'all can help me right now. The rest of y'all still ain't with me. Okay, <laughs> somebody said, that's why I ain't getting married. Praise God. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, okay. Oh, this one, this one, this one is it right here. Because she or he makes me happy. Who ever been in this type of relationship with before? Okay. No. <laughs> okay, no, I'm sorry. Okay. Y'all help me all right. You ever just had one of the relationships where like, everything was perfect? I mean, y'all be on the phone and half the night. Don't even be saying that. Just hear each other breathe and sleep. And just like, you sleep now. I ain't sleeping now. You sleep. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just make me happy. You always do that for me. She is just the nicest person. She always so considerate. He speaks to my life. Yeah, they, they make me happy. But hold on, y'all. Because it will come a point where, where your happiness, if it's dependent on another person, you won't get disappointed. Right. Yeah. The, ha, have you? Okay, let me see if I can just find like two of y'all to be honest. Who ever met a one perfect person before, including yourself? Oh, that's the right church. Okay. Now somebody wants to. Okay, we got some issues in this church, and obviously lying is one. But for the rest of y'all, for the rest of y'all, look at me, everybody. Because, see, if I'm not perfect and I make mistakes, I cannot demand perfection out of you. Yeah, cause, see, I'm going to do some stuff that ain't right, even if it's right to me. Because, okay, I'm going to push into this real quick. Because some of us got home of origin issues that we never dealt with. Ooh, ooh, that's not on the screen, so you better look at me and listen right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some of us got some baggage that we bring from our previous relationships. Right. Yeah. And sometimes when you stand at the altar and say, I do, you really don't understand all the stuff you said, oh. And then it's after marriage, you be like, I ain't gonna say I do to all this. So you really not, oh, you, you really don't put the nails in the bed. You really don't bite your so you never gonna put the top back on the juice. Wow. Okay. So you store this. Oh, God. Oh my. So, so I mean, you, you, you can't give me a card once. That's why I said put that toilet seat up. Let that not be my wife. Well, I pray for me. Even though I preach, I, I know I ain't perfect yet. Okay. Man, you you can't let your happiness. Be dependent on another person. But how do you find out that Jesus be the center of my joy? Yeah. yeah. Because other folk will lie to you, other folk will leave you, other folk will disappoint you. But at the end of the day, when the smoke clears and everything settles, he'll still be the one standing there talking about you, my child. I still got my hand on you, man. Get up, go forward from here, because I got something better for you in your life. Okay, okay, that was number five second preaching part. Now, let me get back to teaching. Here's number five. Ooh, 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 it's getting ready to help somebody. Because I need somebody to help me pay these bills. I think it was Kanye who said, I ain't messing with no. How do you say He said, I, I ain't saying she a gold digger. Now, some of y'all kind of act like you're on. I wish you would. I call you out right here. Put you on the mic. Put your name and everything, and make sure this be on the website, fam. Yeah, cause I. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I need somebody to help me up with half on these bills. It's kind of hard out here for a single person. See, this is the first generation. Listen to me, everybody. The first generation. All you early thirties. 20-somethings, late teens. This is the first generation that makes less 
than the previous generation. Okay, I'm about to help somebody right up and through here. Yeah, yeah, see, yeah. most of you who have come from a decent background, maybe middle class, maybe a little bit under, you have been accustomed to certain things growing up. You never had to work all other cable bill was on. You know, just certain things, some of y'all private school kids up in here, there's certain I things that you knew about and didn't know how much it cost. But now that you are grown and alone, or now that you've gotten out there on your own and graduated and still can't get a job, the pressure of finances become real yes. because the things that you were used to, you can't get no more. Right. Some of y'all didn't even know that cable wasn't a necessity. Exactly. Some of y'all didn't even know you could make one. You don't know now you can't make it without a cell phone. When six of us grew up without no phones and that, you had to take the pay phone or the thing you had to dial every number or wind that joint up. We didn't have no remote controls. We had to turn. I'm a real old school right here because I grew up and y'all would be like, no, he didn't. You too young. I grew up with a black and white TV Amen. with the hair coming out of the same way. Like, I know how to make it. Pastor, how you make it now? You ain't even making a quarter of your salary because I learned how to make it with little or make it with much. I learned how to be content no matter what season I'm Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just want to help some millennials, some generation me. You got to understand that there's some things that are not necessities that you can actually learn how to live with. Oh, okay, Ooh, this next five is get ready, get rid of the field. Lean on your neighbor and say, I don't know what you're going to do right here, but it's about to get rough. I'm going to do this place. Yeah, okay. Oh, this, this will do. This, oh, this, no, oh, 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 just. If it, I know y'all can't say amen. Just say ouch, yeah, just. Ouch. Yeah, because we already slept together. Oh. Well, I already slept together. Now, this may be the first time a pastor ever told you this, because I. I don't I don't work at several churches in several different states and cities and a lot of times couples come to me and say the pastor told us to do this because we 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 our flesh got a little weak, especially about old school couples, and, and pastor was ignorant enough to tell them, well y'all need to go ahead and get married. But I got a question for everybody who thinks like number six, why would you compound one mistake by putting another mistake on top of that one? You don't need to go into marriage wrong. You don't need to marry mess and, and think that, that somehow things is going to get better. No, it's only... Ooh, 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 okay. Ooh, 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 OMG. Because we have a child or children. Ooh, somebody said, that don't mean nothing, Pastor. I'm telling you. I, I, I know, I know. Somebody said, hey, you need to know this shit. So, okay. Sometimes, some of you, you're like, hey, at least I know this person. At least I've been with them for a while. I mean, I, it's kind of crazy out here right now. So at least, I mean, if I got to pick me somebody, I'm going I'm to stick with the, you, you know, the devil I know is better than the one I don't yet. Um, but problem here is, who told you that y'all was supposed to be together in the first place? And just because you produce a blessing called a child, don't mean if you marry under that circumstances that you might up end up being cursed. <laughs> Mary, don't you say nothing right here? Yeah, 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 yeah. Just the simple people, just wave at me. Say, keep teaching this thing. Keep teaching. Okay, okay. Oh, because my child needs another parent. Oh, I know it's getting red. Like it now I promise you, this is the rough part. If you can just chew these vegetables, I promise you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you some meat and potatoes. Then we might throw some dessert on top of it. But but I gotta get this to you. I gotta get this to you. Number eight, because my child needs another parent. Can I find like three single parents who are waving at your baby real quick? Waving. Okay. Ah, praise God. Okay. 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 <laughs> Now, now, come on, I want to be insensitive to the plight of a single parent. Now, I've never been a single parent before, but for two years, my wife did work like almost all nights, and then on the daytime, so she was sleeping. So I learned, had to learn how to be the, the one to do the hair, give the baths, cook the food, and I'm nowhere near domesticated. So I, I kind of got a little feel for that, but I still try to do ministry in my job at the same time. But, but, but I'm telling you, listen to me, all you singles who got all this stuff up on you, it be better for you to stay like that mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to compound the drama but add another person 
who is not really able to help bear the load. Right. Yeah, because because you, your child gonna need you, and if they take it from you and add extra drama to your life, in the end, your child will suffer. Okay. No, but I got to rush. I got to rush. I got to rush this. I got to come on. This is, okay. Oh, oh. I know like five of y'all single sisters better not act like you don't know what number nine is right after they hit yet. Because my clock uh-huh. is ticking. Let me know say tick tock, tick tock, tick tock. You don't know how many times I've heard from the single sisters. I got to get me one of these faster. Cause my clock ticking. I don't know how much longer these eggs are gonna be good. I have to have me some babies by now. Now I've been trying to do the best that I can, but now is my time. I mean, all them other people can get married. They have been crazy and they married for all the wrong reasons. I've been sitting here waiting, being single, trying to do the best I can to keep myself. When is my time coming? When? Yeah, when? 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 I don't know when God only knows that, but I, I do know this: it would be better for you to wait. Help you somebody. It'd be better for you to wait and have that clock ticking because you do know time don't mean nothing to God. Yeah. yeah. See, God, see, here's the good thing about God. God never shows up late. This is sweet. This is better than y'all. No. See, see, what looks like late to us is only God orchestrating his arrival. Oh, this is ooh. Okay, okay. How many of you ever, okay, now y'all church people ain't gonna be able to help me right after through here, but how many of y'all ever, like before you got, no, some of y'all still, I see, yeah, because I'll be seeing y'all pictures on Facebook and stuff. Yeah, yeah, how many of y'all ever been to a party or a club and you know only the court people show up on time? <laughs> only the producers show up when they say it's gonna stop. Now, you wait till about two, three, four hours later, show up. And be stunned, and you, you know, coming in and think you're doing your thing. It's like, hey, the thing started at 8. That's how some of y'all do sometimes with me. The thing started at 8. You show up at 1130. And what if I told you that's sometimes how God be doing? He said, I'm late on purpose so that when I get there, I can make me a grand entrance. <laughs> this is good, same with you. What if I told you that God still got your bow ends? God still got your root. But God says, I can't give it to you right now until you get to where I want you to go. Because if you marry right now, you can only make a mess of it. Yeah. Mm, 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 mm. Okay, 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 Pastor. Ooh. You don't get to mind yet. Well, maybe this one is yours. Because I can't wait no longer. Yeah, anybody? Okay, okay. Any Anybody? Yeah, I can't wait no longer, Pastor. Yeah, I, I got me some knees, Pastor. Okay, y'all acting like y'all don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah, but make sure that when we have the women's night in, that y'all address this issue right up at the end. Because to, to see that all, okay, I'm going to just tell y'all right now that in four weeks, I'm going to preach probably the first message you ever heard on the subject of sex. We will have children's church that day, by the way. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, uh, I, I don't even want to go there right now. Yeah, but but I can't wait no longer. And by the way, single girl, single guy, you're not nasty because you got needs. That's how God made you. Right. Yeah, you're not the devil because you be thinking sometimes while you're in bed, it's nice to have a man's touch or nice to be just there with a woman. You, you, yeah, no, that's not. Unnormal, that's not unnatural, that's how God made you. But God said, I want to do it in a certain way that I can put my hand on it when you come together with somebody. I don't want you to have to wake up in the bed tomorrow. And this is the last time we're doing this. You, you ain't this is it. Okay, y'all laughing, but seven, seven of y'all know. Man, they just don't want to be ready. Y'all better learn how I am. I, I talk straight. Okay, all right. Now, I just spent way too much time on that. Can I get 14 minutes and then we're going to shut it down? Can I get 14? Yeah. Thank you. So I said 15. Praise God. Now, whoever that person was last week that was telling me, no, I'm glad. Are you here? No, they're not. <laughs> Somebody said, no, they're not. Praise God. God. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that messed me up for like two days. I was like, man, am I talking that long? Can't get 12 minutes no more. Okay, y'all said I can get 14 if it get good 15. Okay, let me see what I can do with this. Okay, so that's 10 reasons not to get married, but listen to me, everybody. Here is the only legitimate reason to get married. Here it is. Don't miss this 
everybody. The only reason to get married is because you have God's okay. It don't matter who and how many telling you you should or you shouldn't. If it, God ain't saying nothing, you wait till you hear God. And I don't care if you bought the dress, pay for the, uh, what, what you call it, pay, pay for the reception. I don't, I don't care if it's the day or the hour before. If God says no, you better walk away from it. I, I can't tell you how many couples I said that now listen, listen. I see I don't do oh this about to bless somebody right. I don't do premarital counseling. Mm -hmm. So don't, don't come to me. No singles, no I no friends coming to me. Pastor, we want to get married. We we chose this date. Now that don't that's not gonna work with me yet. Because cause see, I got to make sure I know what God is saying through this so I can give you my blessing before you go through it. At least under if I'm gonna be the one standing here, I now pronounce you a uh, uh, man and wife because it, it because it's gonna be on me that God is gonna judge and God is gonna hold it on and say you didn't wait on me. You blessed something that I said shouldn't be. No, 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 no. I, I, I do pre-engagement count. If you if you date somebody, you gonna bring them down with the time. Yeah, yeah, but then you start see because most of most of you, once you get to the place of having a soul tie, you won't go through it no matter what. Yeah. Once the invitation has been sent out, you gonna say I do, even if you found out last month. Come on, well, oh, that's 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 for range today. Even if you found out last week that he ain't where I thought he was, she yeah. ain't, you, 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 you still won't go through with it because because you try to save face. And because you got a soul tie, as he listens to me, because because somebody somebody need to catch this way. Yeah, see, 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 to me, I'm like, what is a soul tie? That's when we do bed with no bed. Yeah, that, that, that soul tie. When, when I get in the bed with somebody, and I say I do to you before God says I should. Yeah, that's when I give somebody all myself too fast. See, not only does our flesh get tied up, but our souls get in. Yeah, that, that, that means everything spiritually, emotionally, everything that's in me and on me gets transferred to you. Oh, this about to bless somebody right here. Yes, yeah, see, see, that's why I saw you marry people having issues in the bedroom because there's not just you and your spouse, there's you, your spouse, 15 other ones over there, six ones over there, and now we got 25 people up in the bed, don't know what's going on. Right. Past comparisons, stuff that the, the ex or the stripper used to do, and now I can't get rid of that stuff out of my mind. Stuff that I've seen by the media, video, on the internet, and now I don't know what to do. I don't even know what I, I'm confused sexually. Oh, did I say that in church? Yes, I did. This will be real in a few today. Okay, okay. Let me let me define marriage quickly. I'm running out of time. Quickly, here it is. I'm going to define marriage. Marriage. Listen to me, everybody. Single, married, whatever. Listen to me. Marriage is the blending together. Somebody say blending. Blending. It is the blending together of two lives from the opposite gender. I'm going to stop right there. Yeah, because I know we got politicians and presidents trying to redefine what marriage is. Uh -huh. that, that I, listen to me. I'm not the... Um, what do you call? I'm not the gay bashing dude. I'm not the homophobic pastor. I'm, that's not me right there. To all my LBGT people up in here, I love you and God loves you so much more than I do. But I want to tell all of you who dealing with that and wrestling with that and have given into that, that's not God's best for your life. Yeah, that, 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 that ain't what God desires you. But pastor, I've been like this ever since I can remember. That's not on God. That's on sin. Yeah, you do know there are three types of people who deal with the issue of homosexuality. They, oh, this might be worth writing down. It's not in the notes. It won't be on the website tomorrow. So you might want to write this down. There are those who are born that way. Pastor, there ain't nobody born like this. They've been made a choice. Now, how you was born nasty and straight and they born nasty and yet not? You see, you don't want to really wrestle with that. How come you was born with some issues that you deal with? That's okay because it's socially normal. But with them, their issues, you want to kick them out of the church and get rid of them because their issues are not the norm. They were born that way. They didn't make themselves that way. That's called sin. It's called it's called generational issues that have been passed down from the generations. That's that stuff they had no control. Over. I, I believe that there are a lot of people dealing with that stuff. That if, they, if they could, they would change. Yeah. But 
But see, you don't understand. You straight people what it's like to look at somebody who got the same uh, stuff you got and find attraction in that. But when you look at somebody of the opposite gender, you know nothing happened for you. Mm, it's quiet. I know. Yeah, that, that's, that's the first type. But then there's a second type. There's a second type. There's a second type. Of those, 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 are those who've been turned. Some demonic cousin, nephew, aunt, uncle, some 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 mom's boyfriend, some some demonic woman. Somebody came in there and did stuff to you when you were younger, and it messed up your whole mind because you weren't ready to process those type of emotions. They get turned. They don't know. Man, they get confused. They they got issues. They 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 struggle with that stuff. They say, "Hey, get that." Traumatic event out of their mind, they've been turned, but then there's a third type that's on the rise in our culture, and that's called those who try. Yeah, you do know that nowadays, and y'all high school kids know what I'm talking about, that, that nowadays people can sleep with people of the same gender and still not consider themselves homosexual. Yeah, that, that ain't nothing. That's not, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not gay. I just went that way for that time. Well, yeah, the, try it. You know, it, it's getting more and more fashionable. Try it. But sometimes, when you try certain things, some stuff ain't easy to get rid of. Because you can try some stuff and that stuff will turn you out and mess you up and you won't be able to easily disconnect it and they try it. Okay, okay, let me get back to this definition of marriage. I got seven minutes to go. Marriage is the blending together of two lives from the opposite gender in the deepest way possible that will listen to me, everybody, satisfy the two individuals of God uh, involved and serve God's purpose. Did y'all hear what I said? Yeah. Yes. Marriage, when you blend together two people. Yeah. Why? Well, so that the two people can be satisfied and that God's purpose can be served. Those of you who are married, please don't tell me you don't know what God's purpose is for you. Y'all don't have no vision for your family. Y'all don't know what you're supposed to be doing. Y'all just running through aimlessly in life, just, just, just making it day by day, but don't have no bigger picture. I know God got a purpose for the reason He allowed y'all to come together. Okay, I got to get to this Bible now, and only got five minutes, so let me get there and then get out of here. Okay, what God's purpose for marriage? Here it is. Don't miss this. God's purpose for marriage is on the screen. I'm going to do this Bible, then we're getting out of here. This is the best part. Don't miss this verse. Number 18, the A clause says, Then the Lord God said, It is not good for the man to be what? It is not good for the man to be what, everybody? Okay, now here's why I got to help somebody. Because it's not Adam's single status that's the problem. It's his solitary existence. Okay, that's why all of us saying like, I'm not gonna be till I get somebody to say I be today and I'm taking me and burn me. No, 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 no. That, that's not what God wants really for you. No, that's not what God desires. No, no. What satisfied God was for Adam to learn how to share significant things in his life. Yeah, yeah, y'all missed it. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's what God said. It's not good for you to be out here by yourself. I got to get you to get. I got to get you with somebody so you can learn how to share the significant things in your life. And then let me stop and park and preach to six of y'all singles because I hear somebody like, oh, Pastor said we both to share. I can hear a single brother right now. I'm about to run this game with this girl. Tell, girl, we need to share. We need to share with me. No, 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 no. That's not what God is saying because some stuff God is saying you ain't supposed to share because that's mine. Your, your, your body belongs to me. You, yeah, until you say I do to somebody, you don't have no business giving your body to nobody. You render your body as a living sacrifice to me. Yeah, yeah but I, I want you to learn how to share. See, see married people, if everything I can do my way, if ain't nobody's opinion right but my own opinion, yeah, then, 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 then I, 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 I may suggest to you that that may not be God's will for your life. Okay, verse 18, B, B clause. So here's what God does. He says, I will make a helper who is just right for him. Now, because Adam was alone, God decided to give him 
some help. Now notice what the Bible says. Somebody who is just right for him. Some of y'all think you know what's right, but God really knows. This is so good. Some of y'all missing it. Yeah. See, God said, I will give him somebody who is just right for him. Now, can I take this a little bit deeper? Then we're going to come back up and close this thing out. Can I take it a little bit deeper? Yeah. Okay, that, that only, only four of y'all said the rest. I got still in the shower here now. Okay, okay, okay. Now, look at verse 22. Look at verse 22. The text says, Then the Lord God made the woman from the rib, and he brought her to the man. She is a helper. Look at me, everybody. Who is made from his rib. Not from his head to be in charge of not from his foot so that he can step over top of her. Yet she is made from his rib. She is the missing rib. And can I just find three of y'all married people who will praise God because you know your spouse got some stuff that you don't have. Okay, I'm, I'm just going to have church with me and you right now. Yeah, see, I'm, I'm so grateful that this girl that God gave me got some stuff that I don't got. She, 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 she's very organized. She's very detailed. Well, my mind is scattered because I'm always mad for a big picture. But she's able to manage the details of our lives and of our household. Yeah, this girl got some stuff that I don't got. She not only helps me, she sings for me, she cooks me, and there's some things that she helps me with after. Uh, I, see, that's only you know, a lot of people get help me out. See, that's why I'm about to rush in this right there. Because there's some stuff she got and she can do for me that I can't do. Yeah, and all the married people said, Amen. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. That, that, that. Okay, 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 okay. See, y'all married people do not want to help me out right here. But look, what if I told you this? Whenever God gives you somebody, it is because He knew that in order for you to get to where He destined for you to go, you are going to need some help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only reason God, God married you, because He knew you need some help to get to where He. He destined for you to go. Now, 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 listen to me, Marys. Sometimes when she starts fussing, look at me, look at me. I know you can't wave at me, but just wave at me. Yeah. Sometimes when she starts fussing, it is her way of telling you you can do better right now. That, that there's more. She don't know how to say it the right way, and she don't know how to really address you or honor you yet, yet, yet. But but what she's saying, her heart is saying this right here. There's more in you that that's come out of you and I can be, I believe that you're better than the way you're behaving right now. Mm, 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 mm. Ooh, this is good. Okay. Okay. Now, now, now I see some of you who are married and struggling, single and not satisfied. Those of you who are divorced, I see about four of y'all looking at me right now saying, now pastor, that's cute, but I'm here to tell you I got a question I don't think you can answer because how did all the hell he or she put me through help me? <laughs> yeah. How did the times she cussed me out and called me every name that she did? How in the world did that help me? How did it help me, Pastor, when she when he walked out of my life? Here it is right here. That's simple. It helped you because whatever doesn't kill you makes you more determined to live. God, I'm old. Yet, yeah, whatever doesn't kill you makes you more determined to live. Okay, okay, can I find about two couples in here who are honest enough to admit that even though the past ain't always been pretty, you can praise God because the past taught you how to pray. Okay, okay, maybe I need to hit right here. Okay, it taught you how to stick in there through tough times. It taught you how to learn how to trust in God, yeah. So what you need to do is that through the issues, through the arguments, through the disappointments, through the broken distance, you need to learn how to praise God because if it wasn't for all of that, you wouldn't be willing to sit here and listen to this. Okay, can I find three of y'all couples in here who can praise God, grab each other by the hand, and look each other in the eye and say it ain't always been perfect, but we can praise God because at least we survived it. Amen. Amen. Yeah, 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 thank you. It wasn't, it's not Destiny's Child, the only one who 
who know what it's like to be survivors, because I got some married people in here who are married and they survived it. Yeah, I, I done survived some days when I was like, I don't know who this person is. I done survived some days when it looked like the easier, most realistic option was to leave instead of sticking in the sand. Yeah, I done survived some days when it was somebody else that was weak. No, I, that's not my testimony. I can't even tell you that. Yeah, but some of y'all survived that too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I done survived some stuff that I was saying to myself, why in the world did I marry you? Because I feel like sometimes I'm sleeping with the enemy. Mm. Now, I know y'all married people can't say nothing. But at least you can thank God you survived it. Now watch this. Now I'm done. And I'm going to have to get to the rest of this. Actually, I'm just going to I'm done. My time is up and I got to get to this last part. Because then I'm going way off the slides and the screen and you just want to help do the best I can. Go down to verse number 24. Look at your Bible. Then I, I got to go. Verse 24. Because this is, this is the meat. This is it right here. This is the meat, the mayonnaise, the ketchup, the mustard. This is everything right here. You, the bun, the bread, everything. This, this is it. Verse 24. This explains why a man does what? Leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife. And the two are united in to yeah. Marriage, listen to me, I think this is on the screen, cannot happen in the company of more than two. It's going to somebody. Yeah. So, because when you got more than two, you don't have a marriage. What you have is a mess. More than two, Pastor. I, I, no, I don't understand what you're saying, Pastor. I don't understand. Faithful, more than two. Okay, here's more than two, you young marrieds. See, more than two means when mama still got your ear as much as he got your ear. More than two, those of you who are, who are single parents, before you say I do, more than two means your child's needs come before more than two means you got best friends who is not the person you stood at that altar with. That's more than two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, oh, this is going to be good. Oh, i got to teach this last part. See, the Hebrew word for leave, you see that there? That word leave, it, it comes from the Hebrew word yatzav. Yeah, yatzav, yatzav. You don't know Hebrew, so let me help you what it means. Yeah, it means a termination of loyalty. This is what God says. In essence, he says, you got to terminate all previous existing loyalties so that the person that I gave you becomes primary right up under me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, when a husband and wife are joined together, they are free from the privacy of every previous intimate bond. Child, best friend, girlfriend, ex, mom, dad, grandma. In order for this to work, there must be a termination of loyalty to them so that me and you can become one. Some of y'all have been married for years and still ain't cut the cord yet. Ooh, ooh, it's, it's getting real. Okay, all right, all right. And try to help me, I'm done. Then the text says, look at your Bible, don't look at me. This is why a man leaves Yatzav, terminate loyalty, practical, leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife. Yeah. Joined to his wife. Joined, joined, the Hebrew word. The Davak. The Davak. Joy. Pastor, I don't know Hebrew. Can you help me understand what it means? Joy. The Davak. It means intertwined. Interconnected. It means to be cemented together. In order for marriage to work. I stand at this altar and face God and turn my back on everybody else. I got to cut ties. 
That don't make nothing still be friends. You still my mama, you still my child. But but my primary bond is with the person I send you to. My, my primary responsibility now is just to be one with you. To be interconnected. To be intertwined. To be cemented together. We gotta be blended together. Y'all, y'all, y'all ever blended something before? When, when you blend stuff, what happens? It's a blade that does what? Begins to cut up and chop stuff up. Yeah. Because you cannot serve your purpose of producing a satisfying drink until the things you place in the blender get chopped up properly. Okay, I'm trying to help some married person right now. The reason God got you in this season is so we can chop some things up in your life to get you to blend together better. For some of us, we hold on to the past. See, that, that's why some of y'all don't need to be on social media. Don't, you don't need Facebook. You don't need, but Pastor, that's how everybody talks. But well, you find another way. But see, the devil will use that stuff and get you to connect with some exes, and your husband or your wife is not speaking to see your wife or not give you what you need. And then here he comes talking and saying a good game, or here she comes looking like all the right stuff you like, and you still got that bond there, and you can't join to that. Eventually, something is going to win. Something else is going to lose. Marriage is a divine adhesive that is meant to hold a man and a woman together. I'm done when I tell you this. My churches, we live in a day and age. Where the statistics will tell us now that there's more than 50% of couples who say I do that we eventually say I don't. I mean, how many of y'all know people that you went to that wedding and no longer together? And it seems like divorces get quicker and quicker. I've seen some that ain't even, ain't even a year. Well, who, who, who's seen that before? Yeah, yeah, it, it don't take long now because yeah, we live in an age where, 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 where especially our generation, we're not institutionally loyal. We're not loyal to nothing, including people, marriage, no, no loyalty. Just saw a guy in the NFL yesterday with billions of dollars neglecting his own child. Because my needs is first is me. It's all about me. What's gonna make me happy? But part of marriage means God got to cut you up and mess you up so he can blend you up so that the both of y'all can come out better together. You know what? One of the things is my goal for this ministry is that you look back on your marriage six months from now and I'm telling you, if you pay attention, receive what I'm teaching you, your marriage will be better. Yeah, Pastor, that's, that's an awful big statement. Yeah, I just trust the Word of God. That's all. I just see what the Word can do in my marriage. I know what it's like to be at the brink of divorce, bags packed, people not staying in the house. I know what it's like to be at that point and have God bring you back to a place where I be telling my wife every week, I'm so thankful you married me. I, that's the best that I just told you this yesterday. When you married me, that was the best day of my life. Two years in the game. All you singles, all you young teenagers, I hope that our ministry brings marriage back. That is no longer ill. Marriage, I don't want that's so boring. It's not. We, we, we want to stand together as couples who are married as models, yes. mentors, not just showing you our successes, but also the scars. That's right. That's right. Yeah, it ain't always been perfect. Yeah. It's still not perfect. Yeah, I'm, I'm not perfect. One thing I can say, he got his hand on us. And one thing I can say is that the girl God gave me, she's a gift to me. I, 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 don't, I don't want 
I don't, I don't want nobody else because whenever I think about the potentiality of even being tempted by somebody else, I think of everything I'm losing if I get disconnected from this company. Yeah, now I'm not trying to say those of you who've been divorced and survived some stuff that God still ain't going to bless you. But I'm telling you, if you do it God's way, see, I don't, I don't want that look to be in her face and my baby's faces and y'all faces. Come here today and found out Pastor have been like, oh, the other one, he done got scored in the scandal. Pastor, he just, no, it's not going to be me. I'm going to stick with my girl. Stick with the one God gave me. Through the good seasons, through the difficult seasons, through the sweet season when we're not speaking to each other, through the season when we don't have the type of money we have, through the season when I got the vision, but my vision is being aborted by life. I'm going to stick with you through the seasons. Amen. Through the seasons when I'm, I'm not agreeing with you, I'm not understanding you, I, I'm going to stick with you, girl. I wish the very person right now would grab your spouse by the hand. Right now, just get your spouse by the hand. Look at the eye right now. And so I, I, I know we've been going through some stuff, but this thing for life. This thing for life. Yeah, this thing for life, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I know. I ain't supposed to you know. I know, I know, I know. God told me how to come in here right now. That's the person that fight going. You better grab that person and tell this for life. I know I ain't right. I know you ain't right. We did some stuff. To busy each other off. But this thing for life, I ain't going nowhere. I'm sticking in there with you. I'm sticking 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 with you. It's my will. We be joined together for life. Now, singles, I'm going to stop right here on verse 25. Because the text says, Now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. There are so many married couples in this room and all across our city and all across the country. Naked, but got some shame. Because the problem with our modern 21st century hypersexualized society is that the devil has so intertwined himself in the area of sex that even after we get together in God, we still got all the issues to deal with in the process, and we make it. Got shape symbols before you say I do. Listen to me. Take this time to allow God to make you whole. So that when you get to this point, from here it's no longer down, but God is causing you to come up yeah. and go higher. And God can trust you and bless you with your household and your spouse. Because during that season of singleness, you didn't waste it waiting on this day. But you said, while I'm single and with no ring on my finger, I'm still going to be all right.